is also wishing to, if he wishes to at this stage. Maybe I can answer both points. I, I thank the Honourable Gentleman for giving way. He's, he's making a powerful speech. Uh, isn't it the case that uh, the EEA option actually ticks many of the leave boxes? No ECJ jurisdiction, ability to control inward flow of uh, immigration, um, ability to strike uh, trade deals with uh, third countries, but it also um, de delivers the certainty that business is so desperately calling out for because it's a well-established, well-understood agreement that's existed since 1993, but with no ever closer union built into it. So isn't it by definition, the, the form of Brexit that actually ticks the boxes that are in line with the vast majority, we might call it the silent majority, of the British people in this debate. Yeah, yeah. Well, and the Honourable Gentleman, of course, is absolutely right. Um, I note a number of uh, honorable, my Honourable Friends who are uh, Brexiteers, a few in the Chamber today, uh, and I was discussing with one of them last night. The EE, the EFTA arrangements, are something that, that, that we can build a consensus around in this country. It's a sensible option. It suits both sides of the argument. Uh, and I would welcome any of the pragmatic, lever, pragmatic leaders, including a, a, including a number who uh, actually advanced this case during the referendum, to join the cause and argue for EFTA. Uh, I've seen... Right, I've been taking my own...